In Evil West's recent live-action trailer, the seemingly immortal and ubiquitous Danny Trejo is beset by a duo of money-grubbing studio reps who attempt to pump him full of shameless lines about the game's planned microtransactions, season passes, loot boxes, and other vomit-inducing vernacular we as gamers have become all too accustomed to over the last 10 years. Enough! I just want to play... A GAME! Mr. Trejo, you've come to the right place. Now I'm pissed. Evil West is unapologetically just a game. There's a 10 to 15 hour linear single player campaign or co-op if you're so inclined and that's it. There's not even a single side quest in sight, let alone a microtransaction, meaning the entirety of your time with Evil West will consist of anti-hero Jesse Rentier, heir to the Rentier Institute, a not-so-secret vampire hunting branch of the US government circa turn of the 20th century. As Jesse, killing vampires and related abominations in the biggest and bloodiest ways possible is your idea of a good time, and Evil West is correspondingly loud, violent, and occasionally funny, making Danny Trejo its perfect human embodiment. Now, there are some issues here, ranging from small to not so small, so let's put Evil West under the make of the microscope and use our handy dandy scoring system to help decide whether or not this game is worth your time. When it comes to story, it's basically you plus a small contingent of rarely helpful supporting NPCs against the vampire world. The game's big bad and his often annoying progeny are convinced the technologically ascendant human race pose an existential threat to the arrogant and increasingly antiquated vampire species. They hit you where it hurts early, and Jesse spends the rest of the campaign both fighting to save his father's life and struggling to resist punching the quirky engineer tasked with turning you into an unstoppable electrified killing machine. You sure you don't want to hear my radiography joke about... Uh, never mind. So, while the game's narrative sequence of events, aka plot, is engrossing and for the most part well paced, the game's characters and dialogue both struck me as too blunt to warrant praise. That said, they're perfectly fine for what this game is trying to be, and you won't spend much time thinking about them anyway. Because this game is about the combat, and oh how sweet it is. The piece de resistance is your electric gauntlet, an instant gap closer and auto stunlock for normal enemies, which gives Jesse tremendous mobility and crowd control. Using the gauntlet powers up batteries that you can then unleash for big damage, big damage, big damage, big damage. Your revolver, rifle, and shotgun, all of which you can also electrify, provide additional utility against Evil West's dozens of enemy types. And wow, does killing them sound great. From ripping monsters in half to pinball punching electrocuted enemies. Too bad, then, that some annoying repetitive alert sounds hold this microscore back from a 5. A handful of special items and weapons then round out Mr. Rentier's impressive armament to the point that after unlocking everything, I feel like Jesse could give Kratos a run for his money. Speaking of money and Kratos actually, pretty much the only non-combat you'll do in Evil West is hunting down the game's nuggets of lore, collectible cosmetics, and loot boxes. I'm, I'm sorry Mr. Trejo, they're not that kind of loot box. That's right, much as the level design in God of War tempted to trick you into thinking the map was more complex than it actually was by adding little dead-end side paths that rarely led to anything more than a literal box of loot, Evil West's level design is equally if not even more superficial. Take this sequence, in which Jesse bemoans the twisting complexity of an underground mine. In reality, these three paths all lead to the right place and intersect within 10 seconds. These moments of fake depth are broken up by compartmentalized fights that you can't leave until either you or the predetermined number of enemies are dead, so these design decisions mean that Jesse, despite all his rage, just ends up feeling like a sexy cowboy vampire hunter in a cage. It's definitely a bit of a bummer that you're given so little latitude to to explore Evil West's haunting and environmentally diverse world because it is so often gorgeous, bolstered by atmospheric lighting and a fittingly evil color palette. However, some visual jank and occasionally underwhelming textures slash particle effects hold it back from top marks here. Oh, that and the terrible lip sync. Sure. Ready for debrief whenever suits you best. Really, the cutscenes are a bit of a mess, often broken up by abrupt loading screens that then load so fast you can't even read what's on them. Evil West's bosses came equally close to greatness as they're mechanically diverse and thrilling to fight, but you'll face some mini-bosses many times, and they can take minutes to kill to the point that seeing one often fills you with exhausted dread rather than excitement. Wrapping up now, the game's UI is simple yet effective, not much to say here. As for playability, I didn't encounter any game-breaking bugs, though you can break the bugs, or arachnids rather, if you hate spiders and would rather turn them off. And finally, I have little to say about the game's next to non-existent music. Kind of strange in my opinion for a game this gonzo to have such a stripped down and subtle soundtrack, not that the game really suffers as a result. 
So, in the end, Evil West delivers a borderline AAA experience at a budget price, but it's so linear an experience, I don't think you'll get much more than the 10 to 15 hour campaign out of it. Shameless plug, you can save even more by using the code MEGA5OFF at 2GAME, where it's currently $10 cheaper than Steam. In the end, and after averaging up our micrometrics, Evil West gets an aggregate mega score of 3.36 out of 5. Until we meet again, this is Scope, and thanks for watching.